Hello, today is November 8th. This is the KCP community meeting. Welcome everybody. If you have a topic you'd like to discuss today, we do have our usual GitHub issue for the agenda. So please feel free to add comments to this issue. Uh, if there's anything you'd like to talk about, um, we're gonna wait on the first topic until hopefully Stefan has a chance to join today. He's running a bit late. So um, Paul, I'm gonna go to your topic first. Okay, sounds good. So I've got here a really quick proposal about uh, something about refinement of processes. Basically, we're a pretty small group now and we all work pretty well together, but I hope we grow a lot in 2023 and I hope that we scale to meet those needs and I don't think hope is probably a good strategy for us. So what I, what I just tried to put on paper is some things that we've talked about in the past, uh, essentially that we probably need to get a little more formal in how we write up our enhancements so that people can discover them, understand the motivation and history behind them. Um, we've got right now a couple different areas within the repository, and that is growing. Just off the top of my head, I could think our control plane, the tendency items, workload items. We've now got edge workloads. If you haven't seen that, there's a new repository for edge. We've got controller development, and we've also got a catalog repository on there. So it probably makes sense to split repositories where we can in order to scope the responsibilities of what's in each and allow contributors to you know, contribute on the area they're most interested in. Um, as part of our enhancement proposal process, we probably need to have a good group agreement on what is our definition of done? How much documentation does it include for features? Where does that happen? What are the testing requirements? Um, and then I also propose in here that we could probably backport a little bit of this process and get some benefit from that. And by that, I mean, we've got a bunch of APIs out there now. What are their current levels? What does their graduation criteria look like to get to beta or, or V1? So that's what I would like feedback on. Uh, the uh, PR is in the agenda there. Happy to talk about it here if you'd like, or if people want to read through and uh, absorb it a little bit, happy to do it at a, a follow-up. Uh, this looks great, Paul. Thank you. Um, let's see. Presenting. There we go. Uh, so yeah, if anybody's got any comments, uh, happy to entertain them now. Uh, we will obviously also accept them async. Paul, would you be willing to send a quick note to the KCP Dev Google group just uh, referencing this? And uh, I would encourage you to say um, that we're going to do one week lazy consensus. So by next community meeting, if there are no significant outstanding issues or knacks, we will adopt it as um, going forward, if not sooner. But uh, one week lazy consensus has tended to work pretty well in other projects I've um, been involved in. Yeah, sounds great. And as people read through, you'll, you'll notice that uh, number five on there is that I want us to own this as a group. I didn't try to put strict definitions in there. I think we can probably come up with a tailored process that borrows from other communities we've been active in. So I'll send that note out and uh, looking forward to comments. Cool, thanks, Paul. Okay, uh, so I had the next topic here on 2022 releases. If y'all were at the last community meeting a week ago, I brought up the idea that rather than trying to do two more releases this calendar year before we get to 2023, that uh, it might make more sense to try and just do one. And we can, if we all agree to doing that, we can decide if we wanna try and do that sooner, like in the next week or so, or sometime towards the beginning to middle of December before we get into the uh, later holidays. So 
I sent an email to KCP Dev last week, I think, and uh, I didn't get any feedback. So um, I think that counts as lazy consensus <laughs> to a degree. So I'm probably going to suggest that we just do a release in about a month. There's, and, unless there's something pressing where we need to get 0 0.10 out the door now. Um, so again, call for feedback. And I will follow up to my post to KCP Dev with a more concrete proposal and see if um, <laughs> if folks have any comments. But uh, we're, we're not rushing to get a release out at this time. Uh, and there, there's bug fixes and features in flight. So, um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, all right, I'm not going to make you wait, um, Frederick, given that uh, Stefan is still uh, in another meeting. So I'll share this, or if you want to share and drive, um, we can go ahead and start the discussion. What would you prefer? Uh, yeah, maybe I can share it. Sure, let me stop here. OK, go ahead. All right, so you should see my screen. Uh, right, so uh, I've created a ArcMD uh, note, uh, which is a, a summary or rather the, the result of the discussion we, we had in, in the Google Doc. And basically, I try to, to follow uh, the pattern uh, from previous documentation with motivation, goal, non goal. And the proposals, I'm qu quickly over that because we uh, have discussed that um, last week. And uh, I would like just to uh, present uh, the, the proposal. So the proposal is to introduce three new uh, resource types. Uh, the primary one being API export endpoints. And this resource type would be a sync you specify in the spec uh, an API export that you locate uh, like for API bending uh, by providing a path and, and a name. You can also optionally specify a partition. And when you have done that, as a result, you get a list of uh, URL that are the, uh, the endpoint for your API export service in in the shards. So if you don't specify any partition, this will be the complete list for all the shards. And we, we will start with that. So uh, one question is why to introduce this uh, new uh, resource instead of uh, using a, a, um, API export uh, as it was in the past? Uh, one reason is um, you can create this uh, resource locally in a, in a, a workspace and get uh, this information populated by the system controller instead of uh, trying to access a global resource like uh, API uh, exports. And uh, uh, another reason is uh, the possibility to partition. So we can look now as uh, this second resource. So a partition is basically a selector or list of uh, selectors in the spec. And based on this selector, you will um, select a, a set, uh, a group uh, of uh, 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 shards. For instance, here you can see we select a, a cloud, we select a, a region, and you can also exclude things if you want. So in this case, we exclude one country. We, we, we don't want 
uh, any child from uh, North Korea in, in this example. So when you specify uh, this partition in uh, your API export endpoint, uh, the list of URL will be uh, uh, filtered uh, accordingly. So the next step is that we uh, want to provide a, a mechanism uh, to slice and, and dice uh, automatically. And for that, we have defined a resource a partition set that you may create, uh, so that the service provider may create this uh, resource in, in the workspace where uh, the API export is, is uh, uh, created. And you can define dimension. So for instance, here dimension is a region and cloud, and it will automatically create a partition matching this dimension. So you will have a, a partition with cloud GCP Europe, you will have a partition with cloud GCP US, you will have a, a partition with Azure Europe, a partition with uh, Azure US, and you can use this partition so uh, uh, as we mentioned in the uh, API export endpoint, but you can also use this information uh, for the scheduling of uh, uh, the, uh, the controller. So currently we have in uh, um, uh, uh, cluster workspace, uh, a, a label selector, and we will have that also in, in the workspace in the future, so that it will match. So if you specify this uh, selector uh, when you create a, a new workspace, you you will have um, a, a placement uh, that match the, the the partition. So you can by this way you can have a proximity between your uh, instance of, of your controller and, and uh, uh, the, the, the KCP shard. Yes, so that's basically it. So the the, the main points. Uh, uh, do you have any questions? Um, I need comments? some time to read through this, but uh, mm -hmm. what you presented seems to make sense. I uh, unfortunately haven't had a chance to look at the Google Doc that precedes this, so I'm assuming that this came out of the Google Doc and is largely agreed upon. Is that it, accurate? Yeah, yeah, so that's okay. accurate. So there, there have been a, a few couple of iterations uh, after the, yeah. the last bit of the, the Google Doc on, on this one. So uh, I uh, had a call uh, today a bit earlier with, with Steve and, and uh, Stefan to make cool. a, a, a last iteration on it. And, and that's the result for, for now. So obviously, we, we can uh, amend it further with this, uh, additional inputs uh, that, that I get. Yeah, so the, the only comment that I have for anything that stands out is that we don't want to name the resource ending in an S, like a API export endpoints. We don't want it to be plural. So we'll need to come up with another name that is not plural. And I don't have a good one off the top of my head, maybe something like API export locator or something, but it needs to be singular. Okay. All right. Uh, uh, I think there are also resources with a superior. But, uh, yeah, we, we can look at that. I need a better name. Is, is the expectation that this is similar concept as services and endpoints, where you provision a service and endpoint is created for you automatically, or user yeah. will be responsible for creating this object? All right. So there, there, there are similarities, but it's not uh, one one. So uh, the user will be um responsible for creating the resource what it gets it, it gets uh, the, the status automatically populated so uh that would match uh endpoint in, in services so that's but there's some you, connection between it, it exposes secret knowledge basically not secret but uh, knowledge about sharding and about servers and like IPs are not known otherwise to consumers of a service, so there is this endpoint object which fills that in. It's the same thing here, I think. But will the 
existing behavior stays in the API export status fields with the virtual workspace URLs. We will deprecate it at some point because it makes it redundant. And so the, the, R, the API export stays the, the resource, but on yeah, this but, uh, early the interface. metadata moves to this one. Yeah, and there's a reason API exports will be distributed across shards eventually. So there's a caching layer and we distribute uh, those objects. If they are big and changing frequently, it's not good, right? So exports should be mostly constant, not immutable, but they don't change much. That's why we want to move it out and size. Cool, got it, thanks. And so for the service provider deploying controllers, they would like what's the thought process for saying I need to create n controllers for n URLs across different partitions? Like, how do they know how to do that? So there would be two steps. So the first one uh, would be to uh, create a partition set resource. So mm -hmm. Like the slice and dice, so we get a, a, a set of uh, partitions, and they, they, they need to uh, deploy the, the, the controller. So this partition will give them the, the information where the, the controller needs to to be deployed. And is, is that on partition status, or does it point at a? That's that, that's. But, but basically, the, the, the spec is a selector. So that's uh, the selector that you would uh, apply uh, when, when you create a, a, a sub workspace, for instance. OK, I'll, I'll take some time to read through this so that I'm more informed. <laughs> Thanks. So there's a higher level abstraction necessary to really deploy. This is out of scope of that. This, those are really the primitives. Okay. Yeah. Maybe there's something like a partition deployment or something. Maybe. But I mean, ultimately, you need full coverage. And if we can automate or give you a higher order construct to do that, cool. If not, you use all the primitives and you, you get yes. your full coverage. Yes. Okay. Makes sense. David. Yes. Yeah, so I'm just assuming that something similar should probably be done at some point for sync targets and the syncer virtual workspaces yes yeah so there's, there, there will be similarity so the, the partition and partition sets are uh, mm -hmm. generic and for the okay first resource we didn't make it generic but we, we specifically called out that you you would have a uh, thing similar for uh, well, think think. Okay, I hadn't seen the document, sure. David, yeah. concretely, um, probably there will be sync target endpoints, as uh, Frederick said. Mm. And we can make it so it's owned by the API sync target, right? So the owner of the sync target also owns the endpoints object. So you can fill in, for example, a sparse list of endpoints. So like not every shard, but a sync should connect to those three shards because there are yeah. loads for, for it. So think no. about this um, filtering. We could make this generic. Like if we just said that <laughs> rather than <laughs> no. say, why not? No, no, I'm, 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 I'm saying no, because we, we said the same thing um, and we found reasons why we don't want it. Okay. Um, so one reason is permissions, um, like, the owner of the API sync target or the owner of the API, API export has to fill that, right? If DMC is not privileged anymore, um, it cannot see all the endpoints it's uh, responsible for. That's why, that's why it should be a different object for TMC, sync target endpoints. And the second reason is the semantics behind that is pretty different. I mean, the filtering in sync target is very different from this from filling in um, API export virtual workspaces. Mm. So um, it's intentional for permission reasons. I okay. see, I mean, we came from the generic and moved away for reasons. It's it's a balance we have to decide. I, think this is I wasn't involved in the discussions. <laughs> um, but yeah. The more we can reuse the code, even if they're different types, <laughs> the better. 
Yeah, because yeah, these are know. different types, but but the you know they are they are common in the at least parts of their structure and and their logic. So maybe having the ability to uh, you know reconcile them through a, a, a common yeah to have a library which understands That's partitioning right. and uh, filtering makes yeah, sense. as much as possible reusing the logic at least would help yes okay um so I know Paul had uh, talked about a proposal for the process on doing these sorts of things, but we haven't uh, ratified that yet. So next steps on this, um, I know you, you have a to do and a question here about self and the partition. Uh, do we need to answer that before we proceed with implementation or I'm seeing no from Stefan. Um, there are several things we can think about like maybe you want partitioning by a number like you want even smaller partitions for reasons there are things like um maybe we need sub workspaces maybe we have a global workspace i mean this thing yeah. should be pretty uh, available sub workspaces would benefit from copying a generic um partition into a sub workspace which just references itself and gets the values automatically I don't think it's super. I mean, it's 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 one direction we can extend. Yeah. Uh, so it, it seems reasonable to me, uh, other than coming up with a new name for this that's not plural. Is this is this technical or is this uh, just taste? Because endpoints in cube are plural. Yeah, endpoints in cube being plural was a source of problems for <laughs> various things. So. Uh, like the new the new v2 so to speak is called endpoint slice um, it's called an endpoint slice yeah I mean we could call this API export endpoint slice if we really <laughs> wanted to um, so that's a storm and if anybody has better ideas please come up otherwise we use it yeah I mean there, there's nothing stopping implementation at this point like it's fairly easy to rename something uh with search and replace and code gen so um yeah i would start with slice um and if we can come up with a better name we'll try and find one all right um so uh just to recap stuff on real quick on this one i was following up from last week and Propose that we do one more release this calendar year in approximately a month. Um, and I'm going to send a follow up post to the Google group. Sounds good. Anybody have any other topics before we go into uh, new issue triage? All right. If you think of something, please feel free to speak up. Uh, we got 20 things in here. Lots of bugs. Wow, mostly bugs. Uh, all right, well, we'll go from top to bottom here. Um, so we have this one, which I saw three weeks ago and haven't gotten to. Um, I also saw one that just came in uh, that I think is most likely a duplicate. So if... Um, Anybody's interested in looking into the quota subsystem, I'm happy to provide some mentoring there. Um, I'm actually going to say it might be a dupe of 2220. And I'm going to go ahead and just move. Actually, going to move these to next because we do need to do the quota ones as soon as we can. All right. Um, intermittent error trying to create a workspace. Interesting. So I think this one just needs somebody to look into it. 
anybody interested and have time to look into some of the CLI and um, workspace creation stuff? If not, um, I can take this up. I was talking to the author, anyways. Oh, okay, cool. Thanks, Varsha. Do you have time to look into that now? Yeah, sure. Okay, so I'm going to put that in progress then. Thank you. Uh, as they can bind any export through a VW of an API export that claims bindings, did we? I think this one probably needs me or, or actually, Sergius, are you here? I know you said you had to not be here. Okay. Um, Stefan, have you looked at this one? No, I haven't. All right, I'm going to move this to next and all right, uh, version endpoint for API export virtual workspaces doesn't work. Probably should add that in there, uh, mainly because they're, they're like Helm is trying to use it. So um, put this in the backlog. Exports. Cluster workspace type list returns. Oh, this. This is the double identity bug, I believe. Yeah, I think so. Actually, no, because this no, is not going through it. Um, I don't know. 18 days ago, I raised it, and I have no recollections of clearly. I think you can ask, just assign it to me. I will try to dig out more details. OK. Uh, it's like, I, I'm not promising I'm going to fix it, because the last time I touched something like that, it ended up a can of worms. <laughs> but I might find more details. OK, thanks. Oh, it, oh I'm recalling it. It's, because I use a custom type of workspace, and it basically gives me 404 in some cases. OK. And that's that was there. Like the original types uh, existing in API returns properly. But it's more like, uh, you see, it re the error type is different. It doesn't return. When you list it, it lists, it gives you an empty list, or like nil. But this is says 404. So it's just something. But yeah, I will dig out more details and do some tracing. OK, thanks. Uh, this one, come on. Steve Hardy, are you still working on this or pieces of this? The sharded test server with uh, standalone virtual workspaces? Uh, yeah, I started going through your branch um, and uh, pushed up um, a couple of PRs, which were kind of um, not related to the actual separation of the virtual workspace server. But uh, I was planning to try and get the rest of it up this week. I um, just got uh, sidetracked by some other tasks. OK, thanks. Um, I went ahead and assigned it to you and put it in progress. Sure. All right, root compute maximal permission policy doesn't grant access to, oh, right. Um, yeah, this is just something that uh, needs to be implemented. Anybody, so if uh, if folks are interested in contributing and have some time, uh, this is just editing some YAML. Happy to provide a pointer. Um, also, can just do it, but <laughs> would love to uh, let folks uh, participate as well. So, if anybody is interested in uh, working on this, let us know. If 
nobody raises hand, you can assign it to me. And yeah, I will grind it at some point during next week. Of this week. Right, well, I'm, I'm going to leave it unassigned, but feel free. Like if you know if it's the sort of thing where you're not going to get to it for several days, um, let's leave it unassigned. And then if it's still unassigned and you're free in a week or so, feel free to pick it up. Uh, this flake has been around for a while. Um, David, have you or Joachim had a chance to figure out what's? Oh, is this the missing spec bit? Uh, I think so. Yes. Okay. Got it. Uh, yeah, so I don't know if you've seen this stuff on, but we're not really sure why, but something is snipping out the spec from various objects, like either as soon as they're being created or sometime later, uh, you, you end up, in this case, it happens to be with deployments, but I think we've seen it elsewhere where the spec just disappears. Uh, so I don't think that this is a, I don't think it's a sinker bug or a, a sinker virtual workspace bug. I, I think it's something with core API mechanics, but not really sure. So um, yes, what what led to think this was that um, Joachim tested um, this uh, in the entrance uh, test, which is obviously sinker related. But finally, the entrance test creates uh, directly in, in KCP, creates a deployment. And the deployment you get just out of the create call uh, is already without a spec. Can you can you check um, audit logs? In CI, they are pretty verbose. You have all the objects, everything sent and received from a request. Yeah, the, the audit log was empty. The request didn't have the spec, and we checked and, and the spec. request didn't have. Oh. Yes. That means before so it got to audit, it was getting snipped. Yeah, it can be pruning. If there's no schema, maybe it's pruned. So maybe the request had it, but after pruning, this it started. Didn't, it didn't. This just started happening when um, Steve pumped up the the actual, uh, well, the, the number of parallel and tests. So looks right. like something that is happening when trying to, I don't know, hit something that is, isn't ready. Yeah, it's obviously, um, it was happening with quite a high number of parallel uh, threads. I mean, where I don't remember what, what you said, Joachim, but maybe 15, I mean, as soon as, um, as soon as you, uh, as long as you were un under a certain number of, of uh, a, a certain load, I'd say it was okay. And then can you, to happen. if you see it again, can you check the CIDs, the, the shadow CIDs, whether they are complete? I guess they are. But yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, I I know that we've seen this on uh, a KCP instance that we're running. There's just random legitimate deployments that are missing spec so mm -hmm. um you know i, I don't think was that, able... sorry i i don't think that it's um like there is an issue somewhere and like upping the test parallelization to exacerbate the issue is probably a good thing um so you know it's not just like a, a test issue it's a real issue i was able to reproduce that somehow luckily and i stopped the test and i was able to create uh, a full deployment i mean even at the start the deployment was um getting the spec removed then i was able to just you know kubectl create deployment and everything was was perfect so really weird okay uh thank you so um Signed to Steve. Um, maybe so, sorry. Um, maybe just just um, um, dummy thought, but um, server side apply with um, things like uh, deployments is based, uh, and it's it's a quite old patch in one of the first patch in in uh, KCP is based on the um, open API, uh, which is. Um, you know the open API 
uh, for which is based on the CRD, which was not in, which is not in standard cube. In standard cube, you can apply server side apply only to um, uh, objects that have you know that that are uh, in tree uh, uh, real real deployments. So it, there might be some something. David, you say yeah. server side apply doesn't work for CRDs. Yeah, um, and at least at the time we we started KCP. No, no, no. no. Um, you are talking about strategic uh, merge patch. Oh, sorry. Server side apply does. No, no. Strategic merge uh, patch. Yes, you're, you're right. Yeah. Next up. All right. But I'm, I'm gonna. I'm going to put this to next because it's definitely not backlog. Um, I know Steve's out. If anybody has API server background and wants to look at this, uh, please feel free. I will try to get to it as well, but this week is kind of busy. Um, this is weird. A seg vault. Uh, and David, did you get a chance to look at this one? No, sorry. Come here. Yeah, that doesn't look good. Oh. Oh, <laughs> well, there was a set fault, so hold on. Uh, oh, this is the CEL. Oh, I found, OK, this is actually a duplicate. Um, so this is a duplicate of this one. Interesting that it's in the same code path. Like when you look at the stack trace, it's coming through. Um, I can't make this font much bigger. Uh, so it comes through. Ah, sorry. <laughs> comes through CEL trying to track cost, but the ultimate seg fault comes from the underlying Go interface code, and. Um, it's a very strange one. So Are I'm not going to. What's that? Is it new today? Uh, no. I mean, I saw it three weeks ago. And... Because we bumped, bumped uh, CL or we are. Oh, no. no this, this was from you know, th okay. two to three weeks ago. And um, I found this issue from five years ago where it had like the same sort of. Um, same sort of stack trace where it was going through iface.go. And if you look at the code, it like they're basically like, it shouldn't happen and it's not repeatable and it, it's weird. So I don't know what to do with it other than if we keep seeing it, um, like maybe updating to a newer CEL or different Go version or something. But I don't know. All right. Um, Sinker Health backlog. Uh, anybody working on this or no? Uh, yeah, I'm kind of working on this one. OK, can I assign it to you? Uh, yeah. Thank you. Uh, should I put it in progress or next? Uh, next. Okay. Um, this one I'm just going to put in backlog. This was about how you were told workspace access wasn't permitted, and it would be nice if it told you which workspace you weren't allowed to get into. Uh, 
Alrighty. Enhance the error message when admin cube config exists but is corrupt. Yeah, I've always I've had this happen a, a couple times locally and never really figured out what happened. So I'm glad that um, somebody filed this. Yeah, I've seen it multiple times with a vendored version of KCP. It's like twice a day. What? No. Backlog. Doc. Yeah, this one it technically is a correct example, but it's hidden. So, um, oh, come on, GitHub. Um, KCP consumes lots of memory. Oh, and my internet connection is having fun. Come on. Oh, well, that would do it. All right, I'm not going to make everybody wait around for GitHub to come back. So um, if there's not anything else, have a I have, great... a, quick, I have a yeah. question. Yeah. So I, I posted this on the weekend. I basically meant everybody had a proper weekend and didn't come to it. At some point, we discussed why the names for the uh, names for the workspaces must start with a letter instead of the standard Kubernetes validation pattern. I remember we discussed it like months ago, and we didn't get anywhere. Anybody remembers why? I faced into that during development, where I tried to use Google Grid library to generate names. And every time I hit a digit in front of workspace name, basically, KCP declines that. And there's uh, a regex modified in our filters, but that's explicit for that. Yeah, I know at one point we were trying to limit it to DNS, like valid DNS subdomain names, which I think maybe at some point we thought they needed to start with a letter. Um, and we talked about this either in Slack or in a PR somewhere in the past month or two. Stefan, do you recall? I missed the question. I'm sorry. It was about uh, workspace names and why they can't start with a number. Did we change it? No, I think it was a PR for Mark. Did we forget it, or did we intentionally? So that's, close that's the, the thing. I I got to that issue, and I remember we talked, but I don't remember what was the consensus. Like why? Well, yeah. there, there was there was PR, and I think we talked about it. I cannot remember a real reason why we um, rejected it. Um, yeah, I can follow up on that. I'm trying to find the Slack thread you posted. Ah, there it is. Um, I think the, the original comment was DNS doesn't allow it, but it's wrong, so it does. Yeah, I will, um, I'll take that and either get it fixed or explain why <laughs> how's that yeah either way like if if it needs fixing you can just send a message to my ways like fix it and i fix it because i ran into that but okay. yeah, if not just let me know why just for interest and i think a code command might be worth it yeah um yeah I i'll follow up thanks OK, um, anything else? Or you all want to call it a day? All right, happy Tuesday, everybody. See you next time. Thanks. See you.